All right. It looks like I'm up next. So hopefully people are seeing this. Uh, my my videos here. I'm going to be talking about kind of Pixie from this beginner's lens. You know, Pixie just came out. So I decided to take a deep dive into it. I think earlier you kind of saw a little bit about the high level of what Pixie does and then what we call like the T-shape, like how a developer would approach the platform and then drive deep into debugging their applications. But for me, I want to take a slightly different look at Pixie, right? I think it's going to do amazing things to help people debug. It's going to give you lots of metrics and dashboards, basically giving a way to visualize and add workflows to your troubleshooting. But one thing that really piqued my interest when I took a look at Pixie for the first time was the ability to start building these multi-cluster Kubernetes system tools and utilities. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to try to walk you through kind of my, like, as a new user, figuring out what I would be using Pixie for. So I'm going to share my screen, and then I'm going to spend a few minutes and just talk through what I think Pixie is going to bring to the table in terms of giving people the opportunity to leverage all the data that's inside of their cluster. So one thing that I have here is um, the way I like to think of this is whenever I approach a new technology, I try to figure out, can I recreate something that I already know? For example, um, I'm on my local laptop here. Uh, you can kind of see on my screen, it says Pixie Day. And I remember learning Linux for the first time, right? So you have this server, you drop in, and now you want to ask the system some questions, right? So one of the first commands I remember learning back then was the PS command, right? This is a classic command that just tells you how to get all the process information, maybe some command line flags. And you can see things like what the user it's running in, what PID it is, how much CPU it's using, and some of the memory stuff, right? And this is like a really powerful way to administrate a system, especially when that system is running multiple things. So here's the new challenge. What happens when our systems start to look like this, right? So this is Google Cloud's Kubernetes engine, often called GKE. And now that we're moving to this kind of container world where I'm not dealing with a single system anymore, and I'm also running a series of mixed workloads. So when I think about Pixie, it's like this big data platform. So what happens when you start building tools that are built on top of structured data, right? In the kernel world, most people are kind of used to semi-structured data. For example, if you want to rebuild some of these high-level commands, you could parse these files, understand the format, and of course, you could glue together your own kind of view of your system. But again, this is kind of convoluted. Most of this is not really considered structured data like the way we think of it these days in 2020. We're thinking something like YAML or JSON or even XML if you have it. So we want to up-level this quite a bit. So how would you go about that? Well, on the surface of it, Kubernetes has a ton of metadata. So what do we mean by the metadata? So just going to do a quick reminder of kind of what you get out of the box when you're thinking about dealing with Kubernetes. We saw earlier I had three clusters kind of spread across the globe, Oregon, Montreal, and Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, if I click on one of these workloads, this is what I mean by metadata, right? This thing has an ID, use this kind of represented in this kind of YAML structures, how most people view it. And what we get from that metadata is things like the IP address, so forth and so forth. Now, what if we want other metrics, right? So things like how much memory it's using, how do I recreate that PS command, not just for a single cluster, but across multiple clusters, right? So if you've ever installed Pixie or maybe you kicked the tires on that free trial, when you pull up the console, you'll notice something here. You'll have a drop down of like all your clusters. Again, this is Kubernetes native. Um, you can pick different things like namespaces, but you'll notice this thing over here, this, this concept of a Pixie script, right? When you run these scripts, right, it's kind of a way of using the Pixie language to um, get a little bit of insight about what's going on inside of your cluster. And the, the nice thing about this is that you can actually run these from the command line, right? So for example, if you want to know uh, what scripts were available, and again, I'm, I'm a rookie here, so if I'm doing something wrong, it's because I actually don't know what I'm doing, okay? But we're just going to be learning in public today. So here, if I run this script, you'll notice most of those scripts that are available on the UI are also available on the command line, right? So one thing you look at here is say, oh, great, I have a bunch of these pre-built scripts. But the thing is, how do you create your own? That's what I'm most interested in. It comes with a lot of great stuff out of the box. But being a system administrator, I'm thinking, 
what kind of tools would I build if I want to get those custom views? Again, I'm in learning mode, and my whole goal is to recreate that PS command, but I want to put a little twist on it. I want to have an output like this across multiple clusters and seeing all the containers in those clusters. And in this way, I want to treat all of my clusters kind of like that concept of the data center is the computer. So the first thing we have to think about here is how do these things work? Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you what the output of some of these scripts uh, are. So there's a couple of things we have to think about here. One is I need to know what data is available to me. And kicking the tires on the Pixie platform, I found out that most of the data can be had by running this PX run, give me the schemas, right? So when you start to really look at what Pixie's doing, it's taking data from the kernel using eBPVF. It's taking data from Kubernetes, including the metadata, and it's starting to aggregate these things and link things in a way that's pretty unique. So what kind of schema underlies that? So let's just run this little command really quick. So if I run this pixie schema command, based on whatever cluster that I'm pointing at, you'll see I have things like network stats, um, I get the pod ID, how many bytes it sent and received, and for the task that I'm working on, which is I want to recreate the PS command, you also see here that a lot of the data that I want to have is also available by default in this thing called the process stats table, right? And I even refer to these things like as a table of data. And they do a really smooth thing where they're collecting this data in a very efficient way. There's going to be way more advanced workflows, but for this particular use case, I just want to keep it super simple. I just want to know what data I have available to me so I can actually start creating my own commands. So what's behind these commands? Okay, so if you come from the scripting world, you'll be like, hey, I want to get at that data, maybe format it, aggregate it, maybe take a subset of fields. I'm going to show you what a Pixie script looks like. And I think going forward, um, people will start to write and share these Pixie scripts, like little buckets of knowledge or how to do things. And I think people will start to use those as the foundation of their troubleshooting, right? So you probably saw some of that stuff earlier, but I think the ecosystem will unlock here. Maybe we start treating these things like packages with versions and metadata. I'm going to show you the, one of the ones that I've been working on. Um, and this is how you run it, but let's look at the source code. So I have this little directory called scripts. So I'll make it slightly bigger. So inside of this directory called scripts, we're going to look at kind of a Pixie script uh, from scratch. And I'm going to walk you through this just a little bit. So we kind of import the kind of base layer of Pixie here. And what we want to do is we want to kind of set up some data here. And again, we're going to be referencing this process stats table. And we're going to go back about one minute to actually start to get some of that data. Now, this piece here is a little bit tricky. So what I can do is kind of have an alias to get metadata about those containers and pods running inside of Kubernetes. And if you notice what's going on here, this is more of a declarative syntax. Uh, even though it's not mentioned this way, I kind of look at this as like a SQL tier for my infrastructure, right? So I look at it as the declarative way of saying, go get all these data points. I can format this data just a little bit, and then I can actually organize that data or group by or aggregate it however I want. So the way I started looking at these Pixie scripts is like, ah, okay, I can treat them like SQL. I can model and retrieve my data. And then we'll see what happens when I want to have a presentation layer, right? So you can imagine in Bash, we call a bunch of utilities, and then we may pipe it to something else to format it. For example, I'm going to run this particular Pixie script, and then I'm going to format it on the command line using JQ to see what we can do in terms of our next step. All right, so let's see what kind of data we get from this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you how to run this. So on the command line, I'm using the Pixie CLI. I'm going to run with output equals JSON. And I'm going to run that script that we just picked at in the, in the Pixie directory. And since it's pretty Kubernetes native, I can give it a particular system or namespace inside of Kubernetes that I would like to get information for. And what this is going to do is effectively run this over my clusters, OK? So what clusters do we have available? I'll show you that really quickly. So as I was developing uh, this thing, I also was creating little utilities like list my clusters, right? Again, this is just going to be using some of the native tooling that's built into Pixie. We'll run it really quickly so you can see what clusters I have registered in the system, right? So I'm actually using this kind of JSON output, formatting it with JQ. And you'll see here, all of my clusters are, pick, uh, are being printed out. For example, 
you'll see the same cluster names that I see inside of the GKE console. It gives me the cluster ID, a little bit of metadata about the version. What I can then do is take this particular data and then start building tools that are multi-cluster aware. All right, so let's run that custom script that I built, okay? So we're gonna run back to this PS command. So we hit enter here. And what's going to happen now is Pixie's gonna go out to those particular clusters, in this case, Frankfurt, and it's gonna start pulling back things like the pod, the container that's running in there, uh, the PID ID, some of the stuff that we can get from the kernel, the namespace and so forth. And I have a ton of data here. And again, I started looking at this as like, well, I don't know if I would want to build like an end-to-end -end command line utility with like flags and formatting and tables. I'm pretty sure that the Pixie DSL over time could get better to support all those cases. But I'm gonna take the view that this is more like my SQL layer. I should just go and retrieve the data, lightweight formatting, and then maybe use another tool to wrap it. So one thing that I did really quickly was I took the Pixie base and created my own library. Now this is super hacky. All I'm really doing is wrapping the command line for now, but I can imagine in the future, there might be like a go native library that allows me to kind of query this stuff just using my favorite language of choice. But until then, all I'm doing here is taking that same Pixie script that I wrote before and had it in a text file. I'm just kind of storing it in my program and treating it like a library. And we've seen people do this with like SQL statements, right? Like you get a SQL statement that you want and then you give it a high level name like pod stats query. So now I'm gonna just be treating this like a query going forward. It has its own unique syntax. I can, has a lot of power in it, but then we're just going to abstract that away. What I'm gonna end up with then is my own little library where I can just talk about things like clusters, you know, the command I ran before that gave me the name, the ID and the status of the clusters. And also things like those PID stats. Now I have a native way and going of working with this. And of course, I'll show you my little hacks. All I'm really doing now is calling out to the Pixie command line tool, making sure that the data comes back as JSON. And then I'm just parsing that data, decoding it into the native data structures, and then returning them back as a library. And things get a bit tricky when you start to have input. For example, when I'm going out to pass in my own custom Pixie script, instead of running an existing Pixie script, I need to do something interesting here. I can say, hey, the file is not gonna come from this, it's gonna come from standard in, all right? So the nice thing there is I can take that Pixie script, turn it into a buffer, and then just pipe it to the command line when it runs, and I'm doing the same thing as before, I'm getting an adjacent data structure back, and then from there, I can easily parse that and turn it into native objects. In this case, I'll be returning an array of pod stats. So I really think for the next level of Pixie developers out there, they're gonna be writing Pixie scripts. I think in addition to the command line, I kind of treat the command line like a REPL where I can kind of prototype out things that I want. And once I get the perfect script, one thing you can do is again, there's this really nice integration with the web UI for the scripts that you run on your local laptop. So maybe this data is meant to feed the web UI or it's meant to feed the command line. All right, let's tie this all together. So reminder, our whole goal here is, as I'm learning Pixie and Pixie scripts, I just wanna recreate something that I'm familiar with. So we've already figured out a way to get the data we want, and we figured out a way to kind of figure out or how to get it across multiple clusters. So now that we have the raw data, and I'll show you what that looks like again so we can all follow along. And I'm just wrapping it in a shell script called PS, and all it's doing is just calling out to that command line tool and printing the raw data. I've converted this raw, command into a library. So now let's pull it together. So I have a folder called PS, right? So this is gonna be my Go version of a PS command that treats multiple Kubernetes clusters like a single machine running in a data center. And we'll take a look at that code really quickly. And I can imagine people doing this in Bash, Ruby, uh, Python, you name it. But I really think this is gonna be possibly one way forward, which is give me a Pixie library that just turns my infrastructure into something that I can query. And then I can start to do things like get a list of clusters, loop through that list of clusters, and then do things like filter out the namespaces that I'm interested in. In this case, the Kubernetes system namespace, 
And then I can just format that data. So I'm just using the standard library in Golang to just give me some tab output by formatting some of those fields, right? So we saw the data structure we were getting back, like pod stats. And in there, I can get the cluster name, namespace, the name of the pod, and the PID, and some of those things that look very familiar from the pod, from the PS command on my Linux machine. All right, so let's put this together. Let's compile it and see if it runs. So if this were to work, we should just call go builds. I'm sucking in that pixie library. And what I should end up is with this kind of new, you know, I guess if you will, cloud native multi-cluster aware command line tool to mimic some of the behavior that I was doing before on a single system. So if I run PS now, uh, I kind of hard coded the flags inside of this command, but I'm just learning. So we'll just use this as a prototype. So I spit that command out and I'm printing each of the clusters that I'm looping through. So now I'm going through all three of my clusters and it's pretty noisy here. So let me try to make this a little smaller. I'll run it again and then maybe we'll grep out uh, something like Envoy. And we'll try to see where Envoy is running across my machines and we'll see. It's gonna be a little bit of a noisy output but I'll try to step through it to see what we have. So as you can see here, I have four instances of Envoy running across um, my cluster. So I have three. So I have three clusters, Oregon, Frankfurt, Montreal. And even though I'm getting all the namespaces here, here's the PL namespace, which is the Pixie Labs namespace where I installed it. And it looks like Pixie team is using Envoy. So if you look here, I'm actually printing out the command that the process is running. And I'm able to get some data a little bit lower than uh, what Kubernetes provide. I'm able to get the PID ID, how much memory is being used, et cetera. So this is kind of a high level view of like what you can start to do with the Pixie scripts. So once you have Pixie installed in your cluster, it's gonna do a good job of grabbing data from your processes, from your kernel, doing a good job of aggregating everything. And once you have it, of course, you can use it for your troubleshooting and debugging workflows, or you can start to build some of these new tools, right? If I was debugging something that was running inside of Kubernetes, I built a lot of pods that I've deployed and I've always wondered, what the hell flags are being in that container? So instead of me running kubectl, get pods, and then parsing out the args line, I now have something that feels super native to the way I've always been working inside of the Unix world. So I think this is a preview to how people will be building these Pixie scripts. And I think if you're interested in this, you should consider contributing to Pixie, kicking the tires on it. And I think there's gonna be a GitHub repo where we can start to community, as a community, we can start pushing those scripts up and share them with other people. So hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you all. Love to see what kind of scripts you all build in the future. And I guess we're gonna get ready for the next segment.